Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a, a quick look at this RS2 clockwork train set and I believe they called this the, the steam passenger set. This was available between 1969 and 1971. So quite a pretty looking thing and I love the coaches. They're just a, such an unusual design and I think they represent some Swedish coaches and all with those verandas on the back. The box is in pretty good shape. It's got a little bit of a wear here and there and the cellophane is missing, although I think maybe this was shrink wrapped rather than a cellophane window. We can see the box has been held together by sellotape at some point. I'm not sure whether that's original or whether that's been done at a later date. And we've got the words there, ready to run, convert to electric later. What an idea. And I love this, it says, with extra key. That's a really good idea giving you a key, a second key for a train set for a child, isn't it? The vacuum form tray in this box has suffered slightly over the years, but it's largely holding everything where it needs to be. At the top of the box there, we've got six pieces of Super 4 track and they're R483 first radius curves. Sitting proudly in the center there, we've got the Continental Tank locomotive in bright red, and that was catalog number R854. And just below that, we've, importantly, we have those two keys. On either side, we've got those bright yellow Swedish or old style, old time style looking coaches. And they were catalogue number R733. And just below that, we've got the final two pieces of first radius curve sitting there. Now, as they are Super 4 track, you could easily get yourself a controller and an electric locomotive and convert this to an electric railway. So we'll just give this a bit of a wind. I have to say that's beginning to feel a little tight. There we go. You can see how easily that could be overwound. We'll get her on the track, hook her up with the coaches and we'll let off the brake. And away she goes. A fair amount of power there, charging around the track. Just look at that. Of course, this is very environmentally friendly, isn't it? No, no electricity being used here storming around looks really good i wonder how long it would take to get bored of this i have to admit i've been doing this for an hour or so now and i'm not bored of it yet great color isn't she with those yellow coaches slowing down a little now yeah and she's gonna keep going around she comes and i think that's a full six circuits the sticker which would have given the name or the number of this set seems to have vanished sadly. From what I've read, Try and Hornby made these very cheap sets and quite often sold them at, at a loss. They were trying to combat the effects of people like Playcraft selling very cheap sets in, in, in the UK at the time. Now from what I've read, over 60,000 of this set were made in, in a short time between 69 and 71 and about a third of those were destined for the overseas markets. The other aspect of these sets was to try and capture customers at a young age and try and try and keep them loyal to the brand over the years. And Trying Hornby have done some more excellent work on the back of the box, promoting additional products and turning it into a, a more exciting railway. Just look at that diagram on the right there of how to turn it into an electric railway. I think that's terrific. And here we have many other languages represented at the bottom of the box there, explaining everything that's in the diagrams above. Time, I think, for another charge around the track. We'll get her fully wound up again. Almost there. Another turn, there we have it. And then we'll, we'll get her back on the track and hooked up with the coaches. And we'll have a look at page 18 of the 1970 catalogue. With those three great looking clockwork sets there. And we'll let off the brake and off she charges. I think she'd run around the track a great deal more without those coaches. They are, they are reasonably heavy, so she's doing quite a good job with it. The way she goes, charging around. I think I would have been quite thrilled to receive one of these as a child from a birthday or Christmas, perhaps. I think I'd be quite pleased to receive one today, actually. Just imagine getting one of these in 1970 and then looking at the pages of that wonderful catalogue and seeing all those great accessories and the dreams you'd have about what you could do with them. Pressure must have been great on your parents to provide the electric locomotive and power controller so you could finally do away with the key. 
From what I've been reading, this, this replaced the earlier top tank locomotive, which had been available for some time. This more continental looking locomotive, I think, had more appeal overseas. It's quite a nice looking thing, isn't it? Got black wheels, the, the front ones aren't connected to the motor, the coupling rods are just connected to the, the rear ones. Great looking steps. We only have a coupling on the back of the model, although there is provision for one on the front. I don't think this one ever had one on the front, a great big heavy weight there. Steps at the back of the coal bunker and a bit of coal detail. You see that little bit of metal protruding through there, that's the, that's the back edge of the, the clockwork motor, we'll have a look at that in a second. And we've got that lovely great big hole there, where the key goes. Now the securing screw which holds the motor in place is down the chimney. So I've just taken both the screw that holds the motor in, into position and the screw that holds the, the large metal weight in position. We'll just pull that out and have a, a swift look at that. Oh, it's quite heavy so I suppose that in, improves its traction. We'll just pop that down. Now nowhere on these models, the, the coaches either, um, do we have the word triang, it doesn't, doesn't appear. But we do have built in Britain down there. So fairly clean and tidy, I think this one's had a, a, a fairly sheltered life. We'll just pop that down. We'll pick up the motor. So when, when I did start playing with this, the motor was a little bit hesitant. I'm giving a, a little bit of a clean, and it's uh, it's come back to life quite nicely. We'll just give it a wind and, and see how we go. So we take one of the keys. We won't wind it all the way up. Break. Just enough power to pull those coaches around the track. We'll just have a, a swift look at these great coaches. Now this one does have a little damage. She's just missing one of the window spars there. A lovely panelling down the side. I don't know whether you can see inside. She's fully seated. There's great verandas on the ends there. I mean, that's quite a lot of detail for, for such a, a cheap model for a starter set. It's quite a complex two-piece mould. And again, Triang's name doesn't appear on here, but it does have made in England. And we've got the old couplings on either end, just riveted into the into the chassis work there. And we've got plastic wheels on pinpoint metal axles. Lovely little things. They're really great. I'm not sure whether they were ever sold separately. Great roof detail as well. A slight odd thing about these pieces of Super 4 track included in the set is that they've had Triang's name taken out of the mould. They've just been obscured and, and the catalogue number. This piece here, this is a regular piece that didn't come from the set. You can see it has Triang's name and the catalogue number 483. Interesting, huh? Can't work out why they'd want to do that. And finally, we've got these two metal keys, which I think are really important. The chances of losing one are really, really strong, aren't they? If you let a child loose with a set like this, uh, keep one in reserve for when the first one goes missing. Just bent out of one, one piece, of, piece of metal. They're not cast, and they're, again, they don't have Trying's name on, which is interesting. Would have been a great place to have the name there, wouldn't it, on the, on the top of the key. Time to let the brake off just one last time. Now I think this tunnel would have been the perfect first accessory for this little train set. Catalogue number R576, becoming available around 1964, still in production today I think. Now I featured it in a video quite recently, I shall leave a link in the description box if you'd like to have a look at that. Now I think that's about it for this week, I'm going to leave you with the really terrific pages from the 1970 catalogue, there's a great deal in here to dream about. Thank you very much for watching. If you look back again next week, I shall try and have something else from this later triangle period. Goodbye now.